tax reform now in the rearview mirror. Members of Congress will face myriad challenges when they return from their two-week holiday recess in the new year. House and Senate Republicans have until January 19th to come up with another bipartisan spending deal and figure out the future of the Obama-era DREAM Act. For more on this, I want to bring in Republican strategist Ron Meyer and Democratic strategist Antoine Seawright. Gentlemen, Merry Christmas Eve. Thanks so much for being with us. Um, Ron, I want to go to you first on these challenges um, the Congress is going to face in the new year. You know, tax reform, major vic political victory for the president, but there's a steep hill for them to climb. We're talking about the challenges, um, like $81 billion in disaster relief for places like California, Texas, Puerto Rico, the $700 billion the president put forward for military spending in the, in the new year, and then these single item issues like DACA and children's health care in the form of CHIP and the border wall. So what do you think they're going to tackle first? Well, you, I mean, you have it right. January 19th is the date. I think the first thing that they're going to have to tackle is getting a budget or some sort of deal on spending and you have to remember this is in the context of tax reform which just passed and so both sides agree that we want to spend more but it's how much we want to spend and that seems like a really odd debate considering we have but we have Republicans, uh, majorities in both the Senate and the House, and a Republican president. But that's a conversation we're having. And then you're right. We're going to have to figure out, is there going to be a health care fix? Uh, will there be a deal on DACA? Because we have that continuation of DACA expiring soon. And so will there be that compromise where Republicans are okay with DACA in exchange for some increased border security or ending of chain migration or something along those lines? It's going to be a packed January. The, the, the reality is that some of these issues are going to be punted. But the ones that really cannot be punted are this DACA issue and the budget issues, as far as just from a, a sense of them expiring and needing to be taken up. They're, they're the more urgent among urgent budget Yeah, because items. they have real timelines. Um, so, Antoine, I want to ask you about what the Senate's going to look like. We've got some remarkable um, change in the demographics. We've got new senator, newly elected senator Tina Smith, who's going to succeed Al Franken. And we've got, for the first time in a long time, a Democrat, Doug Jones, um, in Alabama. How is this going to change kind of the calculus for the president? Well, I think Congress is going to have to get back to the basics and do the things that they've been sent to do. They have to realize they're the most hated institution probably in the country right now. I think their approval rating was negative zero last time I checked. And so when I say get back to the basics, I mean pass a reasonable and responsible budget, one that will not uh, leave, shut the door to middle class working families in this country. I think they have to, in a bipartisan way, uh, pass a chip chip bill that will make sure that 9 million uh, poor kids in this country have access to affordable quality health care. And first and foremost, they have to also do um, do something with DACA. There's, these people came here, uh, no fault of their own. And I think it's our responsibility uh, in the United States here to do, deal with that in a very bipartisan way. Um, what about, though, I don't want to give you your answer here, <laughs> yeah. Ron. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> but is the president ending on a high note? I mean, in, in, in the sense that there's these huge challenges that still remain, but huge. he's now got tax reform under his belt. He's closing out the year um, on a strong note, strong footing with the stock market. Right. Um, unemployment is, is doing quite well. Yeah, I mean, there's some reasons for him to feel like he has the wind at his back with tax reform. But remember, not one Democrat voted for middle class tax cuts. You know, I was, at, I was with my, my barber yesterday. That's because it's not a middle class tax well, cut. Well, hold on, hold on. But I was with my barber <laughs> yesterday, and obviously she's on a service salary, and she thought she was getting a tax increase. When we went through the math with her, she's actually going to get a $1,500 tax cut. And so 85 to 90 percent of Americans are going to get a tax cut. Not one Democrat voted for it. The question will be, if there are reasonable compromises to be had, will Democrats actually cross the aisle? Or are they going to refuse to give Trump any victories where a Democrat actually votes for it? That's the unfortunate thing, is that I think the spirit of bipartisanship should be there. Issues like infrastructure, issues like immigration, issues like children health care for children. Those are things where Republicans and Democrats fundamentally agree. The question is, do Democrats actually want to give the president, who's un you know, unpopular with their base, <clears throat> any victories? And so, so we Antoine, have to hope that they get past Antoine that. Antoine and, and Ron, I'm sorry to cut you off, but we're going to have to end it there. Love to have you back in the new year. We can debate whether these tax cuts are actually helping the middle class. Gentlemen, thanks so much. Thanks, Julia. They will not, trust me.